Hello, Lex Berman here with part 5 of our QGIS 2.10 tutorials. And in this one, we're going to look at joins, spatial joins, and some issues with projections and encoding systems when you do joins. So basically, I have a couple of global data files open in the WGS84 projection. And I'm going to add some new data that is in a different projection. Um, for now, it's right here. And I'm going to add this one, Taiwan Xi'an, Taiwan Stations. And I don't really think I need any, oh, Karma I'm going to want, possibly. And I'll open those. And I'm just simply going to, um, Okay, wait, they're not in the same encoding, so I'm going to cancel that and start over. I know for a fact that I'm going to want to be in uh, UTF-8 for the Karma and for the stations. We will zoom to that, take a look at it, and you can see that I have the correct Chinese characters in the UTF-8 encoding. Okay. Now when I open the this Taiwan Xi'an 1980, I actually want to join data to it that is in a different encoding. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to the correct encoding that I want to use, which is Big 5, the Taiwanese standard Chinese encoding. So I'll open it in Big 5 Chinese. Then it won't cause any problems when I join it later with my other data. If you look at the attribute table, we're going to have to join it on this one field as the ID to join on, and that's the county code. So it doesn't look like the encoding matters, but we will now check out our tabular data that we want to join to this and we'll take a look at that tabular data right here. So we have this tabular data in a big five format in a CSV file. And we can just open it. This is a Unicode editor, so if I toss the big five onto it, it can't figure out what the encoding is. But I can see that I have a county code that I can join on, and that's that's the important part for here at this point. So I do have these files, and here's another thing I want to point out, this CSV template file, CSVT file, and that's that's a very interesting file. And basically, that gives you a lot of power when you bring tabular data into QGIS. So you can actually declare exactly what the data format and the length of the field is, even if it's a real number, you know, with precision and so on after the decimal. You can declare all of that explicitly simply by putting the correct order of columns that you're going to bring into your, into your quantum GIS or QGIS layer. So let's go ahead and bring that in. Let's go ahead and get, oh, we don't want to add it as CSVT. We just want to add it as a vector layer, as big five. And we'll go ahead and add it. And we'll say it's all files. So we just want to add this one here. And that is going to be open. So this is our population figures for each county level unit. And you can see in the big five encoding, it's all correct. I've got the Chinese, it's fine. I also have all these values, population 2000, population 2001, and 2002. And you'll see that I declared them as integers. 
so they didn't get interpreted as decimals and add a bunch of like 0, .00 after and so on, which is a very common problem when you bring text files, tabular files, into GIS. With QGIS, you can use one of those CSV template, CSVT files, and explicitly declare the contents and format of everything coming into each column. It's a very good tool to use with QGIS. Now I have this tabular data that I want to join to this spatial data file right here. So let's join it. All I have to do is right click, go to the properties of the table that I want to join to, and add a join. It's a plus sign down here. I'm going to add a join layer, which is, has to be a layer that's currently turned on, which is here, the Taiwan population, big five. Now I have to pick the, the join field, which happens to be the same name in each both in the incoming file and in the target field in my current file, but it could be different. Cache join layer in virtual memory, yes. Okay. So I'm going to hit apply and say okay. Now if I go to look in the Xi'an 1980 file, I should now see that I've joined. Before it only had these values, but now I have all the values that I brought in from my tabular data file. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll save that on the desktop. Okay, and we want to just give it a new name like Taiwan Population Big Five Join. And it's in Big Five encoding. Make sure you set that properly. And we'll go ahead and leave it in this coordinate system. That's fine. And we'll say OK. So now I have this new file. I can turn off the old one, Taiwan Xi'an 80, and all these others if I want. And I can now go and explore that attribute table and see that, yes, it's in Big 5 encoding. It's all fine. And I have these population values. Now, one of the problems is that, as you can see, the join created these false column names unfortunately. So I probably want to go in and adjust those, and I'll just do that right now. I can open the, uh, the original oh, violation. I can't have it open in both. I'll just go ahead and remove the join. If you want to remove a layer that's being joined, it's probably better to remove the join first. Okay, that's why gone. Now if I look at it again, open attribute, it doesn't have the join anymore. And I can remove the table that I joined to it now from my view. Okay, now I removed that. And I should be able to simply open it in my text editor now because it won't be confused in thinking that it's being used by another party. Okay. And there it is again. Now all I want to do is get the correct names onto my fields, and I'll use a tool called Table Manager, which is right here. It may not be installed for you. You might have to go to the plugins, manage plugins, and install Table Manager, but once it's there, it's very useful. Now, it'll, it'll whatever your currently active layer is, is the one that it's going to manage, so make sure that you're, ma you're managing the proper layer. And these are the ones I want to rename. I want to rename them based on these names here. So the first one is the, the county name. The second one is the town name. The third one, which is B2, is the full name. And then B3, 4, 5, how many of these are there? Yeah, 3, 4, 5 would be POP2000, POP2001, POP2002. At the moment, I only really care about those because I'm going to use them to symbolize something. I'll rename those as POP2000. In 
incidentally, you can see that the types that I declared in my CSVT file were all respected by QGIS. Save. So now if I go to look at the attribute table, I'll have something a little bit more readable over here, like I'll know what to symbolize by. So let me say I want to get a, a view of the data based on the 2002 population symbolizing properties, style, graduated symbol, on the 2002 population. Those are the only integers available. Um, I want it to be, uh, say, quantiles, seven breaks. And I want a different color ramp. How about this one? Apply. So you can see the heavy population here along the west coast. That's all correct. And if we wanted to, because we were careful about the encoding, we could label our map with those big five characters. First one is the name. And I'm a big fan of buffers. And there they are. They are all correct. Now that's just the county name. It's not actually the uh, this little district name. But nonetheless, you get the idea. Turn those off. Okay, so we have uh, successfully joined our tabular data, including encodings, to our spatial data, our polygons. Now, another thing we can do is we could say, take these karma power plants. These are the karma power plants. Let's check them out. So these have a lot of data in them, and they have that problem of the large number of decimals. How about Taiwan stations? Let's go here. Turn off the power plants. Okay, Taiwan stations. What's in the Taiwan stations file? Okay, it has the name, the bureau, the grade, and so on. But it doesn't, it tells you the name, but it doesn't have Chinese characters. So I would kind of like to add the information from the other file to this. Now, I think we better get it in the same encoding first. So I want to save the, the Taiwan stations right here. You can look at its properties. General. Unfortunate. Here it is. Data source encoding UTF-8. So I want to do a join to make sure they're in big five. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and be careful and I'm going to save Taiwan stations in a big five first. Just so I got all my ducks in a row. Okay. I'm going to turn off the original file, remove. Okay. I'm going to go look at it now. Properties. It's in big five encoding. Now what about those characters? They're still there. In other words, they were converted to Big Five by the system. Very smart. Now I have the uh, tabular data from this file, which has names of all these cities and so on. I want to join it to the tabular data in the stations file, which only has the name of the station and its grade, and a couple of names, but they're in English. Romanized form. So let's go ahead and do the uh, spatial join. So we're going to go into our, let's see, where do we do it? Um, I believe it's under, where are we at? Geoprocessing, it should be. Nope, it's not geometry, data management, here we go. So we're going to do data management, join attributes by location. So essentially we want to say for the, the stations right here, the stations in Big Five, I want to join the information from my file that I joined the tabular data to containing those 
population figures and the Chinese characters. So I'm going to go ahead and output that to a new file, which I will call stations join. And it's in big five encoding, so I'm all set. They do not have a matching CRS. Okay, so that probably caused problems. I'm going to just go ahead and remove it and make sure that the CRS are the same. So the property CRS of the first one is Gauss Kruger Xi'an, and the second one is WGS84. So we needed to uh, save that actually instead of it being the station's big five has to be the big five in the Xi'an 1980 projection as well. So essentially not only do I have to make sure that it's in big five but I have to make sure that I convert it on the way to the same coordinate system. So there it is. Now I have it in the correct coordinate system. Okay, remove the old one. So now I have them both in the same coordinate system. I can run that vector management join by attributes calculation. And I want to join, again, I want to take the, the um, target being the one I just created, the stations in Big Five, and I want to add the population in Big Five. And I will overwrite the join, stations join, and just say yes, create it, go. Okay, it didn't complain, add it. Now I have the stations joined with the original information that was in it, the name of the station and so on. And then it got down to the names of the counties in English, but then I added the new data from the other file, which had the names in Chinese as well as the population. Now I could do different interesting calculations, um, for example, with the population and the stations, if I wanted to. So that's basically it. I did two different kinds of joins. I did a join from a tabular file, and I did a spatial join in QGIS 2.10.